I did request to, for a minute, to join those who have been here since the person of Comrade and our leader, General Ed Tumine, to say something about him. I've been away, I had to, to cut short my trip, I had traveled, that's why I was not here for the last uh, few days. I asked to say something because I'm one of those in the, in the history of our struggle, at some point I was so close to Afande Eri as his personal bodyguard. And you know, for those uh, military people here and other big people, bodyguards are, are so close to their bosses, I think after their spouses, they are second, uh, the closest people. So I know, or I knew that time, I find it win so, so, so well. It was around mid-1983, when I was very far from where the headquarters was, on a detach with a few other comrades. One of them was uh, Anthony Chakavare, and another one, retired Brigadier General Moses Sentongo Diva, that I received a message calling me to go to the headquarters to become, to lead a team that was supposed to protect the army commander then. I reported and started work. So, I know very, very well, I was so close to him. I was a sergeant, I was the head of that team, but very close. Uh, close to here, I found that Mune developed a medical condition related to the injury that was explained in details by Dr. Warren Namara. As a result of that injury, he developed a condition. Which condition was not a simple one. Our doctors then in the bush tried what they could to treat him. And they did treat him, but the situation did not change much. Here I am, Sergeant Kavuma, with my team charged with the responsibility of securing the life of the army commander of the revolution. And here he is sick and very sick. While he was sick, other activities had to continue. Like, uh, you know, we used to do most of the activities at night using the cover of the darkness. So we'd move, shift from one place to another with him, carrying him on our shoulders, on our backs, up to wherever we'd be going. It took some time to organize for his rescue, for, for, for evacuation. It took like two months and really I witnessed him in serious pain. But eventually, arrangements were made and uh, we brought him up to Lake Victoria and handed him over to the team, the Sarang, Let's say Wanda Wanga's team, that took him to 
Nairobi. That's when he joined again the, 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 the Dr. Warren. So, because of that moment, I thought I should do, say something. But, for now, that is not important. That is what I want to say now. But I just wanted, I used it to give you the background. Ahawenji, name Gakugam. Echina ni yenda gamba jeno era ino abantu wengi bakambi reva mukambi reho yona tuene mturu kumanya. So I don't want to repeat those. But I want to pick one uh, thing. I have been having arguments with uh, colleagues and other people about the meaning of the word kadashi. Many people tend to confuse ordinary support or, if, or even voting for the party you, you want as a being a kada. Those who put on uh, um, party colors and sing the party songs, they claim to be kadas. I'm a kada, or I want this because I'm a kada. But my argument has been, it is not enough to put on the party colors and you sing their songs and jump up and down that will make you a kada. To me, a kada is someone who grasps the ideologies, the aims, the objectives, the intentions of whatever you believe in. But even then, after you have done that, that may not qualify you to be a complete kada. You are half kada. You have mastered and grasped all the ideologies and aims and you are half kada, by my definition. What makes you a complete kada, therefore, is after you have mastered those you have the ability to pass them on to others so that others also do understand them the same way you do but also can you put them in practice there if you do the three for me you are a kada by its true meaning I once said for you mourners here that I have been marking or evaluating all of us. And, uh, well, I don't want to use uh, very strong words, but I think I find the A, General Tumwine, is one of the few, has been one of the few God as I have seen. Because he has all the three. To qualify what I'm trying to say about him is all these things that he has been doing, people that people have talked about. Sometimes we are here talking good things about him. But I know in some cases or instances, some people have not been happy with him because of what he has been doing. For example, giving wrong speeches has been a problem. Singing has been a problem to some people. But I want to tell you, those are people who did not understand what Kadashik is all about. Others sometimes fail to, to know which occasion is for a few remarks, which occasion is for a, a, a prepared text, which occasion is for a speech, and which occasion is for a lecture. Like you saw here, General Sarvit, the occasion was for a few remarks. <laughs> but because he's a kada, kadas take advantage of any opportunity to give 
Leave me Richter. <laughs> because you have that feeling in you that people must understand things the way I do understand them. And that's why General Tumwine wants to talk on every wedding and function, but not only talking, actually lecturing. Because when we came from the bush and came on continuing to become uh, as an army commander, then when he was relieved on his duties as army commander, he did a lot of research. He acquired a lot of information about so many things. Houses, corners, plants, mountains, hills, soil, grass, everything. <laughs> now, he felt all of us should understand these things the way he does. And that's why he's been talking and talking and talking. Even singing is one of the ways of communication. That's why even those who wrote the Bibles had to have the hymn books. Because reading alone may, 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 may be boring. But when you sing, then the message sings. And that's why he's been both talking but also singing. So I want to ask those who felt bad about his ways, especially in speech giving and singing, to please forgive him because he was a real, real cutter. <laughs> May his soul rest in eternal peace. I think you all agree that Jenosam Kavuma is also a cutter.